Thank you very much for joining us. Hello and welcome. You are live with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. We're letting everyone come in, have some time to join us as we're gonna get ready to get started. We appreciate you joining us this evening. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Heyer, Environmental Planner with WSP, and I will be facilitating the meeting on behalf of NMDOT tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your Tuesday evening to join tonight's virtual public information meeting hosted by the New Mexico Department of Transportation. We're excited to share information with you about the New Mexico 31-128 Roadway Alignment Study. Specifically tonight, we're going to talk about the portion of the project through the community of JAL. If you would like to join today's meeting on your telephone, please call area code 346-248-7799 and use the webinar ID 821-5931-6963 followed by the hashtag or pound sign. You do not have to enter a participant ID. You can just press pound or hashtag again to continue into the meeting. That number we're also going to put in the Zoom chat, which you can access by selecting the chat icon on your Zoom toolbar. Keep in mind that if you are calling in and watching online at the same time, please mute the audio on your computer to avoid any echo or disruptions. If you don't have immediate access to the internet, continue to just remain on the call line to hear our presentation. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to just go over some housekeeping items. Only our presenters today will appear on video. In addition, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the NMDOT's project website following this event. That website is NM. 31-128project.nmdotprojects.org. In addition to our presentation in English, tonight we are also offering live Spanish translation during our event. For Spanish translation, select the interpretation icon on your Zoom toolbar and select Spanish. We actually recommend that regardless of which language you wish to participate this evening, that you go ahead and select your language under the interpretation button. That's gonna look like a globe on your toolbar and you will select English or Spanish, whichever is your preference. You may also toggle between the two. Además de nuestra presentación en inglés, también ofrecemos la reunión de esta noche en español. Para la traducción al español, seleccione el icono de interpretación en su barra de herramientas de Zoom y seleccione español. Thank you. Community members are encouraged to participate live as we move into our question and answer session at the end of our presentation. That will be in approximately 45 minutes from now. As we move into the question and answer portion at the end of our presentation, there are a couple ways in which you can participate live with us. If you are joining us online through Zoom, you can select the raise your hand function on your toolbar to be able to be brought forward to ask a question live. Or you can type a question in the Q&A chat box that appears at the bottom or top of your screen in your Zoom toolbar. If you are joining us by phone, you can participate by pressing star nine on your telephone keypad and we'll be able to bring you in live for a question. We have a lot of information to share with you and you may want to get a piece of paper and pen to write down information on how to participate. Also, one of our team members will be adding messages in the online chat with details on how to participate in the project. You can also request a paper copy of tonight's presentation by contacting me through email or telephone. My email is jennifer.hyre at wsp.com, or you can call me on my phone number, which is area code 505-878-6577. Again, on behalf of the NMDOT, welcome to our event and thank you for joining us. 
My name is Jennifer Heyer with WSP, and I will be facilitating this meeting on behalf of the NMDOT. Next, I'd like to hand it over to Michael Smoker to introduce our team members who will be participating this evening. Michael? Yes. A good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Michael Smoker, Project Development Engineer with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. Uh, the New Mexico Department of Transportation has partnered with an engineering environmental firm called WSP to conduct this preliminary engineering study on New Mexico 31-128. I'd like to introduce the team that will be presenting this evening. You've already heard from Jennifer Heyer with WSP. Also presenting this evening will be Terry Ward, WSP Project Manager. Our other team members on call with us tonight include Francisco Sanchez, New Mexico Department District 2 District Engineer, uh, and Matt White, JAL City Manager. Everyone I have just introduced will be available to answer questions after our presentation. With that, I'll turn it back to Jennifer. Thank you, Michael. Welcome. I'd like to take just a quick moment to recognize the elected officials who are joining, who are in our virtual audience tonight joining us. Um, we have NMDOT Transportation Commissioner Bruce Ellis. Thank you very much for joining us. And we also has, have House Representative Catherine Brown. Very much appreciate you being with us as well. Um, additionally, we do have, I believe, the City of Joel Mayor Stephen Altridge with us this evening in the audience. Mayor, um, would you like to say a few words for us? Um, take yourself off mute. I'm not sure if you were with us or not. If you are, please unmute yourself. There it is. Uh, thank Hello. you. I, I don't have much to say. I, I would I would like to recognize the effort that uh, Michael and Terry have made in reaching out to the community of Jow with Matt and I. Uh, we we've been in uh, very frequent contact with them and their efforts to keep us apprised of uh, the progress and the movement on this. Uh, is much appreciated and I can't tell how many folks are on but I hope there are a number of local people uh, interested in what's uh, coming their way again thank you Jennifer thank you mayor appreciate it also in our audience we have as Michael mentioned um, NMDOT district 2 district engineer Francisco Sanchez would you like to say a couple words for us uh, good evening everyone uh, Francisco Sanchez, I'm the District 2 engineer that oversees operations here in Southeast New Mexico. Um, you know, New Mexico as a state, especially District 2, we have a lot of needs um, and we're working towards addressing these needs and, and definitely our number one priority is New Mexico 128. And, uh, you know, this meeting is presentation on, on gel. Our team has a wonderful presentation. Uh, you know, I have the opportunity to, to develop a friendship partnership with City Manager Matt and Mayor, uh, they've done some really good things with the city. Uh, we're looking forward to continuing that uh, communication, that partnership in this project, and um, you know, addressing a lot of the concerns that are going through the community. Um, that's what we're here for to improve, you know, our infrastructure. At the same time, you know, we're improving communities with these projects. So, please, um, you know, enjoy the presentation. Ask a lot of questions. Uh, you know, we do understand this area, I'm from this area, but it's, we learned so much from you. So please, at this other presentation, ask as many questions as you like, hopefully you can address them. And uh, of course, take it back to our team to make a better project and ultimately get this project off the ground and into construction. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. I'm going to talk um, just briefly um, about just the topics we're going to cover this evening. Um, I'm going to give just a brief background of, of the project. We're going to talk a little bit about the NMDOT's project development process. We're going to review the prior public meeting input and stakeholder outreach, what we've heard. Um, we're also going to give talk about some of the preliminary recommendations, the detailed analysis, talk about a little bit of the environmental right-of-way and cost considerations. We're also going to talk about the design-build procurement for phase one and the overall project phasing for the corridor. 
go into details about the schedule and next steps. And finally, we'll end the meeting with a question and answer session approximately about 45 minutes from now. As a reminder, the presentation is being recorded and will be posted on the NMDOT project website in the following days. That website is nm 31-128project.nmdotprojects.org. So next, I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, give some background about the project. So the study consists of the two roadway segments of New Mexico 31 and New Mexico 128. These roadways are part of a major transportation network for local oil and gas production and extraction operations within the Permian Basin of Eddy and Lee counties. The New Mexico 31 portion of the project extends from the intersection of US 62 to the intersection with US 285 in Loving. The New Mexico 128 portion of the project begins at the intersection with New Mexico 31 and extends through the community of Jowl to the New Mexico-Texas state line. As I mentioned, there is a project website that has been developed for this project, and there is a lot of really good project information and visual aids for the presentation um, that we're presenting tonight, as well as some of the other information from past public meetings. There's also contact information for the project team, and all of that is available on the DOT project website, which is nm. 31-128project.nmdotprojects.org. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the NMDOT's process for developing projects and where we're at in the process for this particular project. Currently, we're in the study phase of this project. This is called the Phase 1AB by the NMDOT. During the Phase 1AB study, we identify what improvements are needed and why, and we evaluate potential options that could be feasible to carry through to design and eventual construction. After the prior public meeting and general specific public meeting held in 2021, and after coordination with our stakeholders, we incorporated the input received to advance the study and refine the improvement recommendations. We are now nearing the end of the study phase, and so we're back to present to the public our findings and recommendations. We held a public meeting about three weeks ago on May 3rd. The focus of that meeting was the entire New Mexico 31-128 corridor for both of the segments. That presentation and a recording of the event can be found on the project website. So tonight, we're here to talk with you about the section of New Mexico 128 through the community of Jal. And your input is key to helping us advance the project into environmental studies and preliminary engineering design. We will also continue to coordinate with our key agencies and stakeholders that manage resources and lands in and around the corridor. At this point in the project, we've completed a draft phase 1AB alignment study report. The report is under review by the NMDOT. And we will be getting ready to finalize the study report once we receive agency comments and have additional public and stakeholder input to incorporate. Next, I'd like to hand it over to Terry Ward, WSP project manager, who will discuss our public meeting and stakeholder outreach efforts to date and summarize a lot of that input that we received. Terry? Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, as Jennifer mentioned, I'm Terry Ward, WSP Project Manager. Pleasure to be here tonight. And we want to talk about our previous meeting and uh, some of the things we heard from the community. So as Jennifer mentioned, the first public meeting in JAL was held in September of last year. We previewed and talked about existing conditions, challenges. We identified some alternatives. We showed a screening effort that we did. And then at that point in time, we came up with some preliminary alternatives. The questions during the meeting were really focused on how the proposed improvements 
would improve traffic conditions in JAL. There was questions about the three lane section, four lane and, and those types of questions. So we're here tonight to present information that we've done to, to show and answer those questions. And then since that time, we've also heard some, some concerns about noise and air quality. So we'll also at the very end respond to, to those areas as well. Stakeholders that we've spoken to, this is a slide that lists a roster of very, very important stakeholders, and we've spoken to all of them, a number of them on numerous occasions, but just to give you a feel for all of the stakeholders and, and parties and participants out there that we're, we're doing our best to work with and incorporate their feedback into the project, including, including the gel community. So some preliminary recommendations. So now we've changed from preliminary alternatives to preliminary recommendations. So the purpose of the project is to improve New Mexico 31 and 128 to mitigate problems with highway safety, traffic capacity and congestion and the condition of roadway and related infrastructure. The project need to set a foundation here is there's been 722 crashes on 31 and 128 for a six year period between 2014 and 2019. 28% of the crashes resulted in fatalities and injuries. 27 fatal crashes occurred. And the primary type cra uh, crash types included rear ends, head-ons, overturns and right angle crashes. And they're indicative of inadequate safe passing areas, conflicts and intersections, and lack of turn lanes and narrow shoulders. And specifically in JAL, the focus in terms of project need is traffic congestion and pavement condition. So overall preliminary recommendations, we just wanted to give you a, a, a view into the overall recommendations for the corridors, and then we'll switch gears to the JAL specific recommendations. So overall, this graphic is available online on the project website. On 31 from Loving to the 128 intersection, we're recommending four lane, a new bridge at the Pecos River, a roundabout at 31 and refinery, and a roundabout at 31 and 128. The remainder of 31 from the intersection of 128 out to US 62, we're recommending passing lanes in that segment. On 128 then from 31 all the way to the westerly limits of JAL, we're recommending a four lane section with what we call high T intersections at WIP, Orla and Buck Jackson. In JAL then we're gonna show you the three lane section that we're recommending. And then from the JAL or easterly limits to the New Mexico, Texas state line, we're also recommending passing lanes in that section, just to give you a feel for the overall recommendations for the entirety of the corridors. So again, City of JAL preliminary recommendations. The proposed mainline alternative was three lane, four lane and five lane in our previous meeting. We screened out the four lane and screened out five lane. So we are down to a three lane, two way left turn lane or what we call a twiddle alternative as our recommended preliminary recommendation. It matches existing conditions, except it is wider. And the no build will be considered. So the graphic you see at the bottom of this slide features the three lane twiddle alternative that is, that is recommended at this point in time. Improvements also include new traffic signal systems at 128 and 3rd Street and 128 and New Mexico 18, those two intersections. We also have held in-person and virtual meetings with, with project team for the uh, abutting property owners of the project. They were offered and we met with all of those that accepted our offer for a meeting. So now we'd like to review the layout just to give you a feel for some additional information that is available on our project website. So I will pull up there. Let me know if you can see that. Jennifer, can you see that? So this is yes, a layout. Okay, thank you. 
This is a layout in JAL of our recommendations, our preliminary recommendations. I'll just start with describing a little bit of what we're looking at. This is at Continental Drive. The improvements go out past Old Dump Road or County Road 6A, but I'm just gonna start here and walk you through the, the core of the corridor, if you will. So in the middle in yellow is the uh, two-way left turn lane. You can see that with the uh, opposing direction arrows. In orange is existing right-of-way, so existing New Mexico Department of Transportation right-of-way. Green represents what we call temporary construction permits or areas that the New Mexico DOT will ask to take over temporarily for constructing the, the facilities. And then that particular area goes back to the landowner. The red is removal. So here at Continental, we're showing these three existing locations or access points being removed with a brand new access point off of Continental, just to give you an idea of, of how, this, how this works in terms of what we're showing. As I move, as I move easterly then, we'll go through the corridor and you can see again, the green is temporary construction permits throughout the corridors. The purple represents a construction maintenance easement. And those are typically provided at drainage structures or drainage crossings to allow the New Mexico DOT to go in there and actually perform maintenance type activities on those drainage structures. Another color that you see here is, I'm gonna say turquoise. This is new right of way. So, so far this would be the first two areas of new permanent right of way that the New Mexico DOT will, will look to acquire. Okay, we're moving through sixth and fifth. Closer to fourth street here, you start to see some eastbound turn lanes being introduced here at fourth. Uh, the sidewalk here, the sidewalk on the north side stops over, um, stops back here at 8th. The sidewalk on the south side goes out to Continental. So this gray, if you can follow the cursor, is new sidewalk. As we move over to 3rd Street, we, this is the new signalized intersection with pedestrian crosswalk markings in the permanent configuration. We're also showing raised concrete medians in, in this intersection on 128. So if you can follow my cursor, this is a raised concrete median along 128, a little bit of new permanent right away in these turquoise colors. Again, green being temporary construction permit. You'll see another drainage construction maintenance easement or a couple of them here, one on each side in the second street area. And I'll take you over a little bit further to the 18 intersection, New Mexico 18 and 128. And I'll probably stop at that point. Sorry, it's taking a little bit of time here. It's a bit, it's a really big file. This particular file is on our project website. I really encourage you if you wanna uh, dial in a little closer into a specific property or look at this in a little more detail, encourage you to go online and pull it up on our project website. So I'm ready to take over. Go ahead, Reed. That's fine. Okay, now we'll go to detailed analysis. Thanks for your patience on the layout. So in terms of the detailed analysis, preliminary recommendations are design year in terms of our traffic forecasting is 20 41. We're focused on traffic operations and traffic safety from the purpose and need as the predominant analysis criteria. So this slide shows some of our detailed analysis. I want to start with explaining what the graphical numbers are in this chart in the top right of this of this map. We used a, a modeling, a traffic modeling software called Transmodeler. In blue, we took an eastbound section of 128 from Old Dump Road or County Road 6A, or what we have identified here as Wyoming, all the way to New Mexico 18, that intersection. That stretch eastbound is in blue. 
with an all-way stop control at both 3rd and New Mexico 18, which is essentially existing conditions, the average travel time in the peak hour, PM peak hour is 23 minutes. Scenario two, we used a all-way stop control at 3rd and we put a new signal at 18. It reduced the travel time in this blue seg section or segment to 15 minutes. Then we put a signal at both 18 and 3rd Street both those intersections, and it reduced fairly significantly the travel time, and again, in this blue section eastbound to three minutes. And then on the next column, you can see the travel time, or the, excuse me, the average speed in miles per hour. You can see it go from four to 34. And we're gonna show you just a little bit of these transmodal results. So this gives you a preview into what we're gonna show you. And then on the westbound direction, from, from Schooley Road on the west side to Third Street, that distance or segment, the existing conditions, travel time 17 minutes, and you can see it drops all the way again to three minutes when we have signals at both New Mexico 18 and third. And then again, you can see the average speed go from four miles per hour in the PM peak hour up to 29. So now we'd like to pull up actually the modeling results to show you, we'll show you a couple of them from the project website. So again, you can go look at them. If you want to, if you want to go a little deeper in terms of studying them more in depth. So this is the project website. Just scroll down to uh, actually quite a portfolio of information on City of Jal portion. So the first one we're going to show you is the all-way stop control or the existing conditions. So I'll explain a little bit of what, what you're looking at. This is showing 128 and the segment from third to New Mexico 18. You'll see uh, cars and you'll see trucks. Each one of the trucks is, is uh, stopping at the railroad tracks as they cross the tracks. There's roughly or approximately 20% of the, of the vehicles in this model are trucks. So it's a fairly high percentage and we work with the community and the trucking industry and oil and gas to, to um, pick that percentage. So now we're starting to zoom out. You can start to see the, the backup westbound towards Schooley Road. This again, this is a PM peak hour in 2041. Now we're, we're switching to the other side and you're looking at the eastbound backup that's occurring. And as we watch this, it's getting past Continental. It'll get all the way past Old Dump Road or Wyoming. So we're, we're heading west again on the on terms of the backup. And as we showed this with several members of the community, including uh, Mayor Aldridge and, and um, uh, City Manager Matt White, they felt this actually looked fairly representative of what's occurring out there in today's condition. So we felt really good about that. Again, we're on the Wyoming side and it's been, it's continuing to back up. If this continues, it'll jump to the east side in Schooley and it'll back up past Schooley on the east side. So Reed, let's go to the conditions of two signals. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip over the middle one with only one signal. So now let's jump to two signals. This is 2041, a signal at 18 and a signal at third. This is one hour of, of timing at about, it's at 16 times speed. And if we watch this entire video, it really doesn't change much from what you're seeing in terms of traffic flow and traffic congestion. There's really um, very, very little backup comparatively to the existing conditions. So again, some of the questions from the last meeting was, well, how does this three-way segment uh, twiddle, if you will, two-way left turn lane configuration work in terms of traffic operations? Wouldn't a four lane work better? And from this model, this particular three lane recommendation from our perspective works very well in 2041 with 20% trucks, with each truck stopping at the railroad tracks. Okay, Reed, I think we'll go back to the presentation. Thanks for pulling that up. Okay, again, these are online. You can certainly go look at them if you'd like to study them a little bit more in depth. With that, I'll turn it back over to Jennifer. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate that. On the next few slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the environmental right-of-way and cost considerations for the project. 
As part of the alignment study, we've identified a handful of key consideration and constraints within the corridor. The portion of New Mexico 128 through the city of Jal is a developed corridor. It's a developed portion of the project with residential housing and businesses that serve the surrounding um, extractive industries as well as the local community. The project will, we don't anticipate will be impacting the surrounding land uses. And at this point, we don't anticipate that there'll be any residential or business relocations expected. There'll be additional review of potential community and land use impacts that will be part of our environmental documentation phase. We've reviewed the corridors for natural resources and completed field surveys. The portion of Mexico 128 through Jal is quite an urban corridor, very, very developed. There aren't any waterways or wetlands in the area. Um, there also isn't any federal designated critical habitat for threatened endangered species in the area. We've also completed field studies for archaeological sites and historic properties. New Mexico 128 in Jal has some sensitive archaeological and historic properties, some of which are eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. We'll be consulting with the State Historic Preservation Office to discuss the extent of any impacts and the needs for any mitigation, in addition to consulting with the State Land Office and Bureau of Land Management. This will ultimately result in the development of a data recovery plan for the larger overall project to mitigate any impacts prior to construction. Overall, um, the SMA costs for all of the improvements along New Mexico 128 portion of the project is $325 million. Um, an account of this construction will be phased due to funding availability. As you can see, for those joining us online, the table shows that cost breakdown summary. The City of Jal segment is estimated to cost $31 million to construct. As Terry was showing a little bit on that roll plot electronically, the improvements will require areas of new right-of-way beyond the existing New Mexico Department of Transportation right-of-way, whether those are permanent or temporary during construction. We've developed an enhanced conceptual engineering design, approximately 60% design level that depicts the anticipating construction limits and right-of-way needs along the segment in the JAL segment here, Terry had showed that, and we will also have that up on the project website. The um, right-of-way acquisition, as well as the environmental permitting will be based on that enhanced conceptual engineering design. Currently along the JAL segment, we've identified a total of approximately 1.8 acres of additional permanent right-of-way 3.9 acres of total temporary construction permits and 0.9 acres of temporary construction, oh, sorry, construction maintenance easements. Um, the TCPs, as Terry was kind of showing, those are generally for the driveway tie-ins off the NMDOT right-of-way, and the CMEs are generally for constructing and maintaining drainage structures such as culvert pipes. With that, I'm going to pass it back to Terry, who's going to talk about the construction maintenance of traffic. Yeah, we wanted to pivot a little bit in terms of talking about construction and some challenges with, with construction. And uh, we're really, really looking for feedback from the jail community. So maintenance of traffic during construction, there's, there's really several or multiple approaches. Um, one being uh, get in and get out, meaning a very aggressive type approach by a contractor to, to come in and get the work done as quickly as possible. And then another approach is, we call it a block at a time approach or a phased approach. So really the two of those are kind of at the end of the spectrum, balancing an aggressive construction timeline versus site specific access impacts. We'd really like to hear your feedback because the get in and get out approach is one where in, in, in theory, the entire corridor in jail on 128 could be under construction at a time. The block at a time, again, is more of a phased approach where it's, where it's piecemeal phasing as they move through the corridor. So we really like to hear your feedback if you have some thoughts on which approach may be better. We're gonna strive to keep 128 open during construction, including access points. However, 
left turn lanes across traffic to access businesses will likely not be allowed. And I'll show you what we mean by that in a little bit. We're gonna coordinate closely with stakeholders and businesses. We've already uh, started that process or that effort. The contractor will be expected to provide look ahead schedules and anticipate traffic impacts and have weekly meetings uh, in JAL with the community to talk about what's coming and issues that the community has of concern. Traffic delays during construction are likely. New Mexico 128 and 18 and Third Street intersections are planned to be concrete, which adds some level of construction challenges. And the New Mexico 128 Texas New Mexico Railroad crossing work in, uh, in that near one near New Mexico 18, that intersection and the railroad crossing will be challenging to construct. So graphically, this is what we're planning to build, our preliminary recommendations. Again, the center uh, two-way left turn lane, 12-foot driving lanes. We have wider six-foot shoulders on each side. We have sidewalks, but this gives you a feel for the footprint, if you will, of the uh, improvements. So to do that, next slide. The top, we start with moving all traffic to the south side of the corridor and building a widening on the north side. We'll have um, drainage or storm drain infrastructure on that side. So we're showing a, a drum, we're showing a 20 foot work zone or work area on that northerly side and, and two way traffic on the southerly side. The second phase then on the bottom is once we build the northerly widening, we then move westbound traffic over there, keep eastbound basically where it is and work in between traffic. So you can start to see where, for example, if eastbound traffic wants to access a business on the north side of 128, we are not gonna be able to allow or accommodate them to make a left turn through not only westbound traffic, but through an active construction zone to get to a business. Westbound traffic likely would be able to get there with a right turn movement. So the challenge would be in this particular scenario, figuring out how to get eastbound traffic in the westbound direction so they can make a right turn to get to a business. And we have some, we have put some thought into that. Next, please. And then finally, once we've finished working in the middle, we move all traffic to the northerly side, finish up the southerly side, and that's the entirety of building that complete section. Just give you a feel for the, the shifting of traffic and, and access in terms of, of businesses and residents throughout the corridor while it's under construction. So this is a graphic that we put together to, to try and start the discussion with the community about Okay, if left turns won't be allowed across opposing traffic and across a construction zone, how can business owners tell their customers to get there? So the, in green on this map are locations where we're proposing to allow a full movements or left turn movements, right or left turn movements. And then the blue would be uh, streets, if approved locally, that could be used for traffic to circulate around. So for example, if someone is eastbound and they want to get to a business on the north side of 128 between 3rd Street and Old Dump Road, they could take a right. If they're eastbound, they could take a right at Old Dump Road, follow that down to Wyoming, go out to 3rd, take a left and get in the westbound direction and then make a right turn to get into the business. Just to give you an example of the, the, the way this particular graphic will work in terms of business access for the different movements along 128. We really would love to hear feedback on this. And then this one is an emergency route that if there is an emergency or something that occurs in the construction zone in JAL, and for some reason it backs up traffic or shuts down 128 or even 18, this particular route could be used, it could be pre-signed or signs could already be installed to move traffic 
in the event of some type of emergency along 128. We want to give that level of thought in terms of the construction activity there. And again, we'd love to hear feedback on, on the efforts that we're trying to make in terms of working with the JAL community and, and trying to successfully deliver a, a construction effort that'll minimize as much as possible the impacts to the community. So I want to talk a little bit about night work and noise. There will be heavy equipment. There will be trucks. There will be backup alarms. There will be noise. However, there could be an opportunity to allow work to be done at night. So I'll give you a hypothetical example. If night work is allowed with no restrictions, in theory, the construction could take 10 to 12 months. But the night work is noisy and it could be disruptive to the businesses or residents along the corridor. No night work allowed in theory could take 14 to 16 months duration. So no night work, longer duration. So there's a, there's a balance of is night work allowed? Is the impactfulness of night work and the noise something that's worth trying to get the contractor in there and out as quickly as possible or sooner, or a scenario where no night, night work is allowed and all work is during the day, but it takes longer to, to get the work completed. We'd really love to hear your feedback in terms of this, you know, this hypothetical example in terms of should night work be considered by, by the project team with the, with the impacts or should, it, should we not consider it? That's what we'd like to hear from you. Okay. So a project delivery method is for this particular phase, I want to talk about design, build, procurement, phase one and project phasing. Design, build phase, phase one will be federally funded, consists of the following base elements. So it's improvements on 31 from just east of, one, of 285 out to 128. That's funded. That particular phase is estimated to cost 70 to 80 million. Then there's some design build alternatives. Next, please. The alternatives include the JAL section or the JAL segment, and it's top of the list because the project team feels that's the next priority in terms of improvements. Estimated construction costs, 23 to 26 million. Jennifer had 31, that included some contingencies. So this is raw construction cost or bid, bid pricing from the contractor. So then there's 128 from 31 to WIP estimated at 50 to 55 that could be added in and 31 and 128 site safety improvements, which, which could be added in as well. The city of jail improvements currently are not funded. Funding becomes available. They can be added into this initial design build contract. Next, the spot safety improvements on 31 include the mosaic intrepid uh, United Salt industrial areas. And then on 128, we have some spot safety improvements that could be added in at Orla, Buck Jackson, Orla through Buck Jackson or that entire segment. And then we've also identified Red Road, Delaware Basin and Battle Axe as interim intersection improvement areas. And then the potential of adding interim center line rumble strips is another thing that could be considered again if funding becomes available, these could be added into this initial design build contract. This is the design build overview then, a graphical depiction of all of those segments I talked about. And you can see the JAL and Goldenrod, spot safety improvements, the piece on 128 in purple, and then the base funded in red on 31. Again, that's the 70 to $80 million funded piece of design build, including the 31-128 intersection. Next. This is the overall phasing. This is our best uh, effort or best attempt to put together a fundable approach to building out all of the segments. So it, it likely will be phased no matter how it's delivered. And this just gives you a feel for the potential phasing that could occur um, for all the 31 and 128 corridor improvements. Okay, schedule and uh, next steps. I think Jennifer, turn it back to you. Thanks, Terry. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about the schedule and next steps. The project study began in the fall of 2020 with the phase A-B study and collecting data to develop conceptual alternatives that were presented at the study phase public meeting in August 2021 and the JAL specific public meeting in September 2021. Um, as I mentioned, we had held a public meeting about three weeks ago on May 3rd, and now we're having our fourth public meeting today. We anticipate completing the study by July, August 2022, at which point NMDOT will have a recommended alternative to advance into initial engineering design and environmental analysis, which will begin this summer and carry through to summer 2022. Um, uh, we will, we've been incorporating the feedback that we've received from the prior public meetings. We will incorporate the feedback received from our public meeting three weeks ago in addition to the public input received from this meeting in order to help us continue to advance the project. We expect to continue, we expect to begin construction of the initial build phase starting as soon as fall 2023. Construction of additional priority areas will be phased and the timing adjusted depending on funding availability. Our next steps in the process will be to gather input from the public today and after our event for us to complete the detailed phase AB study report, to complete environmental studies and documentation, to develop design build contract documents for the request for proposal, which is now through summer 2022. We'll identify right of way acquisition needs. We'll select a design build team by around early mid 2023. And then we will plan to hopefully start construction of phase one summer fall 2023. Well, now that you've heard from us, we would like to hear from you. Before we open it up for a question and answer portion of tonight's event, though, I do want to tell you my contact information and how you can reach me to provide your comments and thoughts to our project team and ask questions about the project. You are welcome to email me at jennifer.hyre at wsp.com. You can call me with your questions and comments at area code 505-878-6577. You can also, if you prefer, send us um, your comments and questions through the postal mail to our WSP office in Albuquerque. There is also an electronic comment form available on the NMDOT project website, and that will automatically, when you submit that, be emailed to me. We do prefer electronic submittals and ask that you provide us with your input by June 24th to help us con to continue to advance the project. Again, the project website is nm. 31-128project.nmdotprojects.org. You can also request a paper copy of tonight's information through calling me or emailing me, either one, and we'll be able to send you a paper copy. We can also provide you with an electronic copy that will also be on the DOT project website, in addition to the other visual aids that we presented this evening, and also some information on how to contact us. And the recording will also um, be on there in the coming days as well. So we did have some questions that were provided to us in advance of the public meeting. Um, Terry mentioned that a little bit, that we had questions regarding noise. And so while we give people a chance to um, get ready to ask their questions, we're going to address that. But before we talk about that and then open it up for your questions, a reminder on how you can participate to ask us a question, because we would love to hear from you this evening. If you are joining us on Zoom, you can select the raise your hand function to be brought live to ask your question. If you would like to drop your question in the Q&A chat in your Zoom toolbar, you can do that as well. If you are joining us by telephone, you can press star nine, and we will be able to bring you live. So there's a couple different ways in which you can participate with us this evening. Um, if you are not ready to ask your question now, that is completely okay. You are able to reach me at the different means that 
that we've provided and we look forward to your participation. Um, so I'm going to answer just a little bit about the noise and then we're going to um, see who we have this evening that has another question. The question that we had received in advance of the public meeting was whether or not we would be conducting a noise study specifically in the JAL segment for, uh, for the project along New Mexico 128 and also um, in addition to if we were conducting a noise study what might be done about noise in in this segment of of the project um, that so for for the for determining when a noise study is warranted the federal highway administration has some criteria in which is applied to determine when it when a project meets criteria for being to where a noise study is required um, the types of projects that require a noise study are brand new roadway projects or roadway projects that significantly expand the capacity of a roadway by adding adding additional lanes. Um, as it was mentioned that the existing condition that is out there is remaining, it's getting a little bit larger. Terry can talk a little bit more about those details. We definitely have heard from some of our property owner interviews about the about some of their noise concerns and we're going to be continuing to work with those specific people that had concerns about noise to see how we might be able to address some of it. Um, Terry, do you want to talk a little bit um, about some of the noise aspects as well? Yeah, just Jennifer, uh, in terms of noise mitigation, a common technique is noise walls. And again, Jennifer mentioned uh, by FHWA standards or guidelines, this project is not required to do a noise study or install noise walls. But as you look at the corridor, even if we were required to with all of the um, intersections and driveways and access points, noise walls would be minimally effective because there'd be there'd be a significant number of gaps in them. So again, even if the project was required to install them, they would be minimally effective because of the density of access points um, along the corridor. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Um, I do see that we have one hand raised. Um, Floor, would you be able to help us bring that person in live? Jesse Baezid, go ahead with your question, please. Jesse, you may need to unmute yourself. Jesse, go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we yes, can hear we you. Can. Okay. Well, I'm just, uh, we live north of 128 and west of 6th Street off of Ocho Road and uh, been here for many years. And I think it's for the, everybody living off north of 128 and west of 5th Street. I mean, that intersection at 128 and 6th Street, I, I own the property right there at that corner of, of 6th Street and 128. And uh, just trying to cross this, the highway, you know, from uh, north of 128 down 6th Street, trying to cross the highway, you know, is, it's, it's, you can't, you can't, I mean, the traffic, you know, even if you put a stoplight at 3rd Street, I mean, that traffic will be backed up all the way past 6th Street, you know, where you cannot cross the highway without, you know, you know, being in great danger. Uh, the people I've been seeing for the last two, three years, that middle lane, that turning lane, they use it as another lane right, right now. So, you know, sometimes the traffic will stop, let you cross 128 off of 6th or 5th Street. And they kind of signal, you know, trying to help you to cross it, but you can't see. And I've seen two, three wrecks, you know, just by being on my property where somebody's flying down that turning lane, using it at, you know, and, they're giving you access to cross the highway and then they just come and keep on. Um, I mean, I don't see how this three lane is going to make any difference, even with the stoplight at third street and at the highway. I mean, I just don't see how, you know, just by seeing this day in and day out, seeing the traffic, how it works. I mean, without having a four lane or having a stoplight, you know, way west of sixth street 
and one, you know, uh, 128 further west without, you know, creating gaps in between the traffic. I mean, it's going to be backed up all the way from that stoplight all the way back. And, you know, it's not going to alleviate anything, I don't think. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Um, Terry, would you be able to help us kind of um, address and, and speak to um, the intersection at 6th Street and the intersection at 3rd Street? Yeah, I'm, and I'm assuming the, the question was really related to a driver trying to cross and, and not pedestrian. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll speak in term. Maybe I'll speak in terms of both. And maybe I'll start with pedestrian crossings at at fifth or sixth. So in terms of the corridor, if I start with pedestrian crossings, we'll have marked crosswalks at um, New Mexico 18 and 128, and then at 128 and Third Street. So anybody in other locations that's trying to cross, the 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 idea is for them to make their way to Third or to make their way to 18 and use the, the marked crosswalk, pedestrian crossing, and the signal systems there that'll be there to, to do the crossing. In terms of vehicles trying to cross, yeah, the, the existing conditions in the peak hours with the long backups, it, it appears very challenging to try and cross because the vehicles are queued and backed up quite a bit through those, those intersections, like you mentioned, fifth and sixth. You look at the trans modeling in the 2041 with the two signal systems, there is not that same level of backup to any extent. So then the challenge will become trying to find a gap, you know, in the traffic. The signal at third um, will introduce some gaps for westbound because it'll stop westbound at times. Um, still will have to, still will have to work your way through eastbound traffic because you're right, there is no signal system or anything in terms of eastbound traffic um, causing a gap, but at least they're not queued up and backed up, you know, way out past Wyoming or Old Dump Road, like we showed in our existing conditions trans modeling. Um, Matt White from the city, would you want to add anything to that? Thanks, Terry. I appreciate you putting me on the spot. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add. Uh, we've looked at their model, and if their model works the way it is, I think it will help. And I do hear what the gentleman said. I've seen exactly the problem he has. We've given a lot of tickets for these drivers that jump into that middle lane and use it as a passing lane rather than a turn lane. And that it has been a problem, and we, uh, we watch it all the time. Hopefully these lights will make that better for you. Uh, I'm not sure putting another light further west would help the flow of traffic. Uh, it might end up with a mess like we have right now. Uh, I don't know if that helps you any or not. Thanks, Terry. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Terry. That's helpful. Um, one of the other questions that we had from um, a member of the public in advance of the public meeting was asking actually about also air quality, specifically from the exhaust fumes of the existing traffic that's there and wondering what was going to be done, um, if there was any studies that were planned um, relative to, to air quality, um, relative to air quality that Currently, that the areas for um, Eddy County um, and Lee County are in attainment um, for air quality standards set by the Environmental Protection Agency and the New Mexico Environment Department um, with the proposed traffic movement improvements, we anticipate that actually air quality will be in improved. And in during the study phase, when we did look at air quality, that transportation related air admissions are not a significant contributor in the general area compared to other um, kind of surrounding land uses as well. Um, Terry, do you have anything you may want to add to, to that regarding air quality and some of the improvements? 
Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. No, just that if anyone you know would like additional information in terms of some air quality efforts that we've done uh, that do show a projected improvement in air quality, like Jennifer mentioned, because of reduced congestion, we'd be more than happy to provide some additional information. Okay, great. Thank you, Terry. Um, so I don't see that we have any questions in the Q&A chat. As a reminder, if you are joining us online, you can open the question and answer chat and drop us your question. You can raise your hand and we'll bring you on live. So you can ask your question. If you are joining us by telephone, you can dial star nine and we would be happy to take any of your questions. And that way you can have time to talk with the project team if you have those questions that you'd like to answer now. But as a reminder, um, maybe Reed, let's put up the the slide showing my contact information because it is absolutely okay if you are not prepared to ask your question this evening. Um, you are able to do so after our event. You can contact me through email at jennifer.hyre at wsp.com. You can call me at area code 505-878-6577. You can also send your questions and comments to our through the postal mail and send it to our physical address in Albuquerque on Louisiana Boulevard. There's also a very nifty comment form on the DOT project website. Some of you have used it. Thank you for using that. Those comments come directly to me and we're able to answer those. If I can't answer it. We get the project team involved so that that way we get all your questions and comments answered. Um, I do see we do have a question in the chat. Thank you. Um, the question is, what is the projected start date of construction on New Mexico 128 in JAL? That is a good question, John. Thank you. Um, let's see. I think I'll, maybe I'll push it over to you, Terry, and we can also bring up one of the other slides. I know you have that on the top of your head as to when construction is anticipated to start. Yeah, it's a great question. So number one, the, the improvements in gel currently, as I mentioned, are not funded. So it's, it's somewhat of an unknown exactly when construction will start right now because it'll be driven by funding. However, if funding becomes available, and the gel improvements are added to this design build project that we're working on, the construction improvements in gel could start as soon as fall of next year. So that's why we're really aggressively trying to get ready, doing a lot of outreach with the community, starting to talk about construction impacts because that's not that far away. So again, the gel improvements currently are not funded. If funding becomes available, they could be added into the design build project and could start as soon as fall of next year. In terms of funding, um, Francisco, do, would you wanna add anything in terms of funding for the gel piece of the improvements? Yeah, thank you, Terry, I would. You know, there, There's two aspects to the gel funding. Uh, you know, there is a lot of grants out there. You know, there was a bipartisan infrastructure bill that was passed. Uh, you know, the state will see some additional federal funding, but a lot of that is is through discretionary uh, grant fund, uh, funds. So we have put in a, a raise grant for gel. Uh, we will know the results of that in, in August. So hopefully, uh, you know, that grant will get funded and the gel portion uh, can be part of the overall design, design build uh, uh, packet. Uh, of course, you know, we have strong support here in Southeast New Mexico from our legislature. Uh, you know, the last five years, they've really seen the value of investing in, in infrastructure, especially in Southeast New Mexico. Over the last five years, uh, District 2 has received most of uh, the majority, not the majority, but the highest percentage of state funding for our US 285 and some other projects out there. So, you know, I'm hopeful, you know, the, our partners in the legislature will continue to uh, you know, provide state funding for a lot of these infrastructure infrastructure uh, projects we have here in District 2. So that's another avenue that we'll be exploring for funding for this project is going back to our state partners and legislators 
And, um, you know, there's been several house bills passed to address a lot of these areas uh, throughout New Mexico and South East. So that'll be another avenue we'll be exploring this upcoming session. Thank you, Francisco. That's helpful. Thank you, Terry. Floor, do we have anyone that has raised their hand or who is participating on the telephone that has tried to call in? Uh, Jennifer, at this time, uh, there are no more questions in the Q&A, uh, nor do I see any attendance with their hand raised. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Francisco, would you like to say a couple words to kind of wrap, wrap us up? Um, there, we don't have any more comments or questions, and we have folks who can contact us later. So I'll I'll hand it over to you. No, just once again, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I know how valuable everybody's time is, but it, it's very important for us to to hear your your concerns, whether it's this this meeting or as Jennifer stated, you know, through our project website. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll continue to work with the community in jail, uh, the mayor, uh, city manager, of course. And uh, we just look forward to uh, delivering this project for South East New Mexico. Uh, it's needed. Uh, we understand uh, the importance of it. And uh, just want to thank you for participating tonight and thank our team for a wonderful presentation and working to make Southeast New Mexico a better place for all of us. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>